Okay, PM345. This is the slick shift for the Defender, which is the R380 and the LT77 gearboxes. This is designed exclusively only for the Defender. Okay, so what you get in the kit is some spacers here, which are in blue. And now they're for packing to raise up the uh, gear lever housing. You also get a sleeve, and this sleeve fits in the trunnion or um, yoke as some people call it which fits on just like that now you also have some bolts and a lower gear lever assembly which is longer than the original that's why you need packing spacers now get the right one in here on the gear lever housing and it fits in like so okay and the whole idea is to achieve less of a throw when you're changing gears and this is very effective also, you might find a little hamster living in the bottom of the box, but I very much doubt it. Okay, so we're here to learn how to fit it, because you're already sold on it. So what we have here is the LT77 gearbox, which is almost the same as the R380, or the gear lever assembly is anyway. The LT77 has a reverse lever plunger and a fifth gear stop just there, and the R380 under that greasy lump only has the fifth gear stop because the reverse is in a different position. You can do this job in the vehicle and the first thing to do is remove the knobs and the rubber gator. This means you can remove the gear stick assembly with the M10 by 1.25 bolt like so. Lift it out of the way and put that somewhere safe. You'll be needing that later and then remove the packing around the selector housing all right this is just for vibration and noise or reduction of it we're only going to concern ourselves with the gear selector housing which you can access in the vehicle very easily don't use a sharp instrument when you're removing the rubber gator use a spanner or something and then lift this out of the way like so this you can get at the selector housing right well the first thing when we get here is to release the springs these are bias springs and they're just to get the gear lever central. No need to remove them, just push them out of the way so they're sitting down like so. Okay. Next thing to do is remove the retainer bolt and the washer. It's not done up very tightly. However, you might first of all need to crack it off with a socket and then wind it off with your fingers. Okay, don't lose these parts, important. And once this has been removed, you can lift out the lower gear lever, but there is a slipper plate and a spring just below the surface. Now watch this. I'll pull it out and it pops out, like so. The risk here is that you could actually lose it if you're working in the vehicle. And watch this. I'll pull it out and it goes bang, disappeared. Right, so a little bit of advice when you're doing this. Use a rag and when you lift it out, it will still be there, okay? Keep this safe and out of harm's way because otherwise you're going to have to wait a couple of days to mail order it. When pushing it back in again, it is a little bit of a B and you need to make sure that you have the right tool and it doesn't slip, otherwise you'll lose it. Okay, so just a word of warning. If the slots in the gear selector housing here are excessively worn, that means this housing piece needs to be replaced. Next thing to do is to remove the gear lever housing, all right, or a turret as some people call it. And it's retained by four bolts which are done up to um, 25 newton meters. Right, you also have gaskets on earlier gearboxes or um, RTV silicon on later gearboxes. Right, what we're after is the trunnion and the gear lever seating here. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little bit about this before we go any further. This is the fifth gear stop. All right, when you pull it over to fifth gear, it stops there. And if you go into reverse, there's a plunger here which actually gives resistance and you need a gear lever to be able to push it over. Okay, so what we're gonna concern ourselves with is undoing the grub screw here, which is a five millimeter Allen key. All right, you want the best fitting you possibly could get. Sometimes these are tight, sometimes they're not. Either way, these need to be thread locked before you refit them and make sure that they are tight because if they're coming loose it means you'll lose your gears they'll become very sloppy all right so the gear stick seating is held on by a circlip and just a bit of advice make sure that you leave the grub screw in place all right then you won't lose it reference here is with the seating it goes in where the grub screw is with the beveled edge to the top and it fits in that way 
and not the other way around. Once it's in, sir clip on, that's it. You only need to replace this seating if the original one is worn, so you get an extra one in the kit. Right, after then, just clean off the gasket, scrape it, whatever. If you're going to use a gasket, you'll have to order one separately, it's not in the kit. Or use some black RTV silicon, which is probably the best thing for the job. But before we go and slur up anything, what we need to do is make sure the grub screw, as I said, needs some sort of locking on here to make sure that it doesn't come loose in service. This one is a thread lock, it's not a nut lock, it's a bolt lock or a stud lock. And this will dry quite hard. The other one I've got in my hand is actually got that on and that was almost impossible to undo, which is good. Alright, so once that's on the thread, get it on there before it dries. So fitting it, basically you need to estimate where it is and then screw it down into place. And the trick here is, once it's screwed in, you want to make sure that it's actually in the hole, okay, the locating hole. If it's not, then the screw will not screw all the way down, is what you need to do, is to make sure that it's flush, all right. You'll know when it's tight, because you'll nip it up, all right, so now the head is flush, all right, we know that's fixed in there properly, just a last little nip to make sure that it's home properly, okay. Right, now that's tight. Okay, that is not going to come undone. So, now we can get the silicon out. And with our TV, you only need a thin bead all the way around. And it needs to be continuous. So, you get a good gasket type seal, right, like this. Take seconds to do. Showing you the day after results is how much silicon actually gets squeezed out. So remember, thin bead only. It's plenty good enough. All right, so you've got your first layer of silicon. Then you've got two spacer plates. All right, so first spacer plate gets silicon. Second one doesn't need it. And then the gear lever housing has the silicon as well, bead. So we put this together with the springs towards the rear and then use the four bolts and spring washers that's in the kit. These want to be torqued up to no more than 25 newton meters because this is into aluminium. Right, once that's done, you'll see a little bit of a slough of silicon out there. Wait until it's dry and then peel off the remains. Don't wipe it while it's wet, it makes a real mess. Okay, the next thing to do is to slough a bit of grease on the lower gear selector where it's going to be in contact with certain bits and pieces. This is a molybendium grease. You can use multi-purpose grease, it doesn't matter. Okay, you see I have my finger over something and that is a slipper plate and spring. Now, I'll be the first to admit it's not exactly that easy to fit. And the first time, it went ping. Now, I was using a screwdriver like this, trying to get to fit it and it would not go in whatsoever. All right, even pushing it this way, it needs to sit just below the surface when you push it down. Right, so eventually, after struggling like this for a while, I came up with a better solution, which is using a socket, which is about the right size, I think this was a 9mm socket, and then pushing it in squarely into the ball, and that slipped in just nicely. And now, once that's in, we can then go ahead and fit the retaining screw and washer. This is done up to about 9 newton meters. Next thing that needs to be done is to put the springs back into place, or as we call them, the bias springs. And they fit over the pins of the lower gear lever assembly, okay, like so. I found it's easier to use a screwdriver, lift them up and push them over with your finger, okay. Right, so once that's there, then what you need to do next is to put it into third gear, which should be straight away, and then adjust the bias springs. Now the reason we're going to do this with these bias springs is to make sure that it sits comfortably and you can select third and fourth without having to push it over left or right, okay? The bias springs themselves just put enough resistance on the springs to pull it into the center in a neutral position. So you set it in third gear, all right? Now you can see that it will have resistance and the best thing to do is do this in the vehicle and make sure you can select third and fourth by pushing straight over or back. 
you'll know if it's not right because you won't be able to get third very easily when you're driving along and this will be annoying so spend time adjusting it and getting it just right once you're happy then make sure that the lock nuts for the razors are locked tight okay this means it won't wind off as you're driving okay that's both sides if you're still not clear about this, check out a workshop manual under Manual Gearbox Adjustments. This will explain how to do it and measure it with feeler gauges. I don't need to tell you how to put the rest back together, but it does help if you're going to use a new M10 by 1.25 nut. Right, just as a bit of added bonus, I'm just going to show you how to adjust the fifth gear stop. If you're having issues with the other side, then I'll do this in another tutorial because this is a little bit more involved. They very rarely go wrong, however, but we'll do the stop. It's very rare that you have issues with this. However, if you need to, it needs to be cracked off and then wound off a bit and then put it into fifth if you're finding difficulty getting it into fifth gear. All right, once it's in fifth, then we can go ahead and hold the lock nut. All right, we'll actually got to wind this off a bit more and then use the screw and wind it in clockwise gently until it just makes contact or you find a little bit of resistance then wind it off just half a turn okay like that hold it and then do up the lock nut right that is now set and you should find that fifth gear will go in easily without overcompensating all right just like so